Uh, we are encouraged by the turnout this evening. We hope that it is a reflection of the gravity of the situation in Europe and not a reflection of, of Eurocentrism. We hope that this might be one of those inflection points for the movement uh, where the anti-war, pro-peace, and anti-imperialist components are revitalized. And we find a way to concentrate our powers through more effective coordination, communication, uh, so that in the future when we uh, when the call goes out to mobilize for Haiti or to oppose subversion in Ethiopia that results in war or to oppose AFRICOM, we will have the numbers that will demonstrate to the warmongering criminal U.S. state that there is popular opposition and unbreakable solidarity. We are familiar with what is unfolding in Ukraine. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the background or delving into the uh, intricacies related to the issue. For that, I point you to uh, the Black Alliance for Peace's uh, statements and my writings on the subject from, 2000, from uh, 2014 to the present. Others will provide that analysis this evening, uh, but I hope the thrust of the remarks uh, that we hear from our panel members are structured around the political and strategic questions that this situation poses for the movement. We would like to see the contours of a plan come out of this, of this gathering. But what we do want to say this evening is that for the Black Alliance of Peace, uh, we say that the focus must go beyond Ukraine, uh, that Ukraine is the symptom, but the disease is the US, EU, NATO axis of domination. We say that the movement would always find itself on the defensive and in a reactive mode until we are ready to, to take on the difficult work of delegitimizing US exceptionalism, exposing the bipartisan commitment to full spectrum dominance, and stripping away the veneer of respectability that the gangsters of empire are able to use to obscure the crude, raw, narrow interest that they attempt to advance to the detriment of global humanity using terms like the responsibility to protect. <laughs> we say, who protects us from you? Today's Ukraine, tomorrow it might be China, even while the people of Afghanistan are starving, bombs are still dropping uh, on Yemen. The wars continue in Ethiopia. Black and colonized people are still subjected to military occupation by the domestic army known as the police of the US. And the people in more than 30 nations still suffer from illegal sanctions imposed on them by the axis of domination as collective punishment for daring to attempt to exercise national self-determination. It is imperialism, folks, specifically the pan-European white supremacist colonial capitalist patriarchy that must be identified as the enemy and struggled against. Others may have different views on this, and that's all right. But this still has to be said because uh, those of us who find ourselves on the receiving end of ongoing criminal uh, configuration of those forces can no longer afford to be concerned about the fragile consciousness of first world activists who still find comfort in the mythology of their nation and the fantasy and the fantasy of something called white Western civilization. We hope that this evening we will struggle to find ways to work together. We hope that we can find ways to take advantage of the war weariness that is starting to emerge with the population in the United States. We should be posing the questions this evening of how do we link the obscene looting of the people's resources in the forms of the military budget to the failure to provide just some uh, modicum of relief to the working class through Build Back Better? How do we make the issue of peace an issue in the upcoming midterm election and indeed in all elections going forward? Let us attempt to focus on developing common strategically informed programmatic work, not just around Ukraine, 
but the mission to build a new society, one in which we can finally say that the uh, characterization of the U.S. offered by Dr. King as the, quote, greatest purveyor of violence on the planet, unquote, no longer applies like it still applies today. Let us work for peace, but let us ground that struggle in terms that will be relevant to the colonized, to the oppressed and exploited of the world. For the Black Alliance of Peace, we ground the struggle for peace within the Black radical tradition, a tradition that says peace is not the absence of conflict, but rather the achievement by popular struggle and self-defense of a world liberated from the interlocking issues of global conflict, nuclear armament and proliferation, unjust war and subversion through the defeat of global structures of oppression that include colonialism, imperialism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. So for us, that struggle is against the structural, the material interest that drives state policies that must be identified and defeated. Again, it is all captured in our opposition to imperialism and why BAP says as members of the Black is Back Coalition, the task is to turn imperialist wars into wars against imperialism. That we see as the task and our responsibility. And on that, we, we say there will be no compromise and no retreat. So. Let's get to work. Defeat imperialism, dismantle NATO, fight for people-centered human rights, all power to the people. Greetings, everyone. Yesterday, February 21st, the Russian Federation recognized the Donetsk, Donetsk People's Republic and the Lugansk People's Republics in the Donbass region of Eastern Ukraine. For weeks, the Biden administration and its close ally, the United Kingdom, took the lead in warning of a Russian invasion of that country. Both countries and their EU and NATO allies have invented such conjecture out of whole cloth in the past. I personally recall false tales of Iraqis taking Kuwaiti babies out of incubators, weapons of mass destruction, which never materialized, Libyan soldiers taking Viagra to commit mass rape, the leaders of any nation the U.S. doesn't like of killing their people or Russian bounties paid to the Taliban if they killed Americans. No one who calls themselves an anti-imperialist should have believed this latest story either. But Vladimir Putin made all points moot when he called the bluff and ended a scheme to kill the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, uh, agreement between Germany and Russia and to impose more sanctions on Russia than already exist. In recent days, war propaganda was uttered and written at a level I can't remember. But it's interesting, the corporate media, presidents and prime ministers all behaved as if war in Europe was somehow worse than war breaking out anywhere else. Of course, the U.S. is currently occupying about one third of Syria, stealing its oil, imposing sanctions, and even destroying its supply of wheat. The U.S. stole Afghanistan's assets, and that population now faces starvation. The Iraqi parliament asked the U.S. to withdraw two years ago, but neither the Trump nor Biden administration saw fit to do so. U.S. and NATO have 800 military bases around the world, mostly in the global south, from AFRICOM to Indo-PACOM to SOUTHCOM, all of which imply a right for the U.S. to claim the entire world as a sphere of in influence. So some of the angst over Ukraine is the result of it being a European country. Uh, and even some client states in the global south accept this. At yesterday's Security Council session, Kenya's representative Martin Kemani received praise when he said African countries accept the ways in which Europeans carved up that continent without regard to African uh, connections. In addition to the shock of hearing him give credence to these notions, I think Somalia might want a word with Mr. Kemani. Its territorial integrity has been violated when Kenya acts as a US client state under the guise of fighting a war on terror. 
The UN is not innocent either, as it works with what is known as the core group of US, EU, and Canada to undermine Haiti's sovereignty and to literally choose its leaders. My point is that all must be rejected. Inevitably, inevitably, Russia has been targeted, but we must say no to it all. There must be no unilateral coercive measures, no sanctions anywhere, no wars on terror, no invasions, no interference, no claim of phony rights to protect, no NATO, no $780 billion military budget, no core group, no Lima group. We must say no to the bipartisan war party and yes to opposing all of their actions. Thank you very much.